Hello everyone, this is Jim Neeb from Jim Neeb Woodworks again. Uh, today I'm going to do a really quick video just to um, kind of show you how a CNC machine can really help, a CNC router specifically, can really help with even a simple table. Um, this is, this table is just really just a stand for a fairly heavy bronze statue or sculpture. Um, it's, it's a quarter circle with four thick legs um it's a eight quarter black walnut so it's a pretty straightforward table to make with any uh, method um you could these they're just mortised the legs are mortised into the top um you could cut these out with chisels or use a router um but i'm going to show how quick and easy it is with a, a cnc router and i'm going to show that you can actually just you don't even have to create a tool path for certain things you can just use your jogging on your cnc uh like on mach 4 on the controller itself without a, a specific tool path to run um, just to tr clean things up or in some cases just to make a cut that's super simple and you don't really need um, to do any uh, tool path cre creation or spend any time doing that um, hope you like it. If you um, do, please hit the subscribe button. Thank you. So this is a time lapse cutting out the uh, mortises into the bottom of the table and then it's going to cut the uh, perimeter profile out of the top. This took approximately 20 minutes if I remember right. Um, and you know, it, it cuts it perfectly. Uh, versus having to cut it out with a bandsaw or cutting the mortises out with chisels. Um, and it allows you to reuse the same exact vectors between the mortises and tenons, which is really nice. Um, I'll show the tenons coming up here shortly, but um, always remember to leave a little bit of tolerance for a fit. You don't want a perfectly tight fit that has to be hammered in. And also remember that when you put glue in there, it's going to... Uh, be a little harder to get in and if you live somewhere hot like where I do in Phoenix in the summertime that glue can actually set up pretty quickly so you don't want too tight of a fit because if you end up having to hammer it in and only get it part way uh, you may not get it out again and you don't really want things to fit that tight you could split the wood or something so I generally want to leave like five or six thousands at least in even 10 or 15 is fine in this case I didn't have to uh, add allowance in the vectors themselves because my bit was oversized by about three or four thousandths which gives double that between the uh, um, mortise and tenon so uh, that actually was all I needed to to create enough extra tolerance to fit these in nicely so now let's go to cutting out the mortises or sorry the tenons okay in this clip we're machining the tenon uh, for the back leg. The front legs, the three front legs only have one brace behind them. The back leg has a brace on both sides. Um, you can see that the two braces are dovetailed into the main leg. I find those are actually easier just to cut on the uh, router table. Um, so I didn't use the CNC machine there because uh, on a router table you can just cut that first dovetail into the leg and then um, slide the the braces by to, to create the the pin piece uh, much quicker on the on the router table and get a really good fit. So um, that's how I did, did those. Um, and then, as I mentioned on this, I used the same exact vector from the design of the tabletop, so it's really easy to fit. And then you'll see I made a mistake creating the vector um, because I made the the support braces on the sides uh, too big, and uh, I'll show you how I fixed that. Okay, when I made these tool paths, um, I had intended on having the tenons be, or the braces uh, stick out about this far. Then when I made the braces, I put a little larger shoulder on them than what I originally intended, and I forgot to go back and change the tool path. So um, I could just cut this off with the bandsaw and tune it up with a, a chisel, but in this case, I'm gonna just manually use Mach 4 to step through that and uh, shave it off because it's faster than modifying um, the tool path to clean that end up.
one thing to remember when you're doing this manual trim using the jogging is to set your jog rate down to a very low percentage so that um, you're not going too fast and, and get a lot of chip out. So in this case, my normal jog rate is like 600 inches per minute. So um, I just override that uh, in the Mach 4 jog rate slider, uh, set that to like 5%. So I'm kind of running it. I don't know, like 50, 40 inches per minute or something like that, uh, like at, which is kind of my normal machining speed for the, the G-code file. So this works pretty good. Uh, it's a little quicker than taking out a chisel and, and shaving off the end after a, a trim with a bandsaw or something like that. But you just have to be careful that you don't jog too fast and get and go tear out the end or something. I did that on my first one, so learned that the hard way. And here's the final table. Um, I finished this with satin, uh, minwax, polyurethane. That's what I use on almost all of my projects. Uh, I usually wipe on two or three coats with the wipe on poly and sand with 400 grit in between and then um, spray the last coat or two with um, the aerosol cans uh, of the same product. Um, I like I like the satin finish. I don't like the glossy finishes on wood typically um, unless I'm making a tabletop or something that I really want to be flat with no pores showing then I'll then I'll put it on heavy and maybe use semi-gloss but um, the gloss just doesn't look right to me and it also uh, leaves kind of a stickier skin. It it's harder to sand correctly and stuff so um, I like the satin. It seems to dry a little faster as well. Um, so this this is the, the final table. It turned out um, pretty nice, I think. Um, you know, some people don't like machine cut dovetails or machine cut mortise and tenon joints and stuff. I really like them just personally because they, I mean, they fit perfectly. Okay, if you like this video um, and, and you like this kind of video, um, please subscribe. Uh, it really helps me out. Um, and feel free to ask questions or leave comments um, on future kinds of videos or, or just if you have questions in general about, about the video. I always answer them and um, I like to see what people think and see how uh, I can improve or uh, new other topics in general CNC or woodworking kind of things or whatever um, so look for I look forward to any feedback and please subscribe if you like this kind of thing thank you